praise you. Well, good morning, everyone, again. And uh, those I haven't seen in a while, nice to see you. All right. Bishop has covered all the ground, so I'm just going to hit the tarmac running. And thank you, sir, for everything. Thank you for that exhortation. Amen. We are going to continue from where we stopped last week. And we talked about keep planting, keep planting, right? Keep planting because we are farmers, okay? If we are not farmers as in agricultural, agriculturally, we are investors. And it is not investing in money only. We invest in the real commodity, the word of God. Hallelujah. Jesus said, Yes, Luke 8, he said, the word of God is the seed. The word of God is the seed. So this is what we trade. We are traders. We trade the word. Amen? Um, we are investors. We invest in the word. We are farmers. We farm the word. That is what we live by. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Am I correct? Okay, book of Peter, 2 Peter, 1 uh, 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 Peter chapter 2. Uh, he says so that we say we should desire, verse. I think from verse 2, we should desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby. Desiring the sincere milk of the word so that we may grow thereby. I was examining breast milk. I was looking into breast milk again to see the advantages of breast milk. Amen. And I know that there are uh, so many information, so much information available online telling us about the importance of breast milk. And in fact, there are some people who have dedicated their lives to discouraging people, mothers, from breastfeeding because they need to look, keep a certain look to look good. What they don't know is breast milk is the best milk for a child, not, not you know, some situations where it's not very possible, it's not possible for the mother to breastfeed, feed, and that is where we get external help, amen? But I observed that the first few days, I think the first two to three days of a child's life connected to breast milk or in relation to breast milk are very crucial. And breast milk changes as the child grows. The mother does not need to do anything. The first day, second day, third day, the breast, the milk, it's not real milk. It has something that the stomach of the child needs that after those three days, the breast milk will switch. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. The breast milk will change. And then the ingredients that, were, that made the first two, three days very crucial, we begin to dissipate we begin to reduce and then a different kind of ingredient will now ingredients will now make themselves available we know it's god that orchestrated it it's automatically done the body knows which one to shut down and which to increase and the bible says the milk of god's word the milk of god's word so whenever the milk of God's word is coming, God knows the stage of your development and what is required. So he makes it available for you privately in your home on a daily basis. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The word father in Hebrew means source and sustainer. Abba or Abi, that's my dad's name, A-B-I, Abba, is a, a Abi. Abi is a Hebrew term, and it means uh, source 
and sustain her. Hallelujah. So he happened to have two uh, Hebrew names. Amen. Now, God is our source. And he also is our sustainer. Unfortunately, we have lived too long in a world where there's abandonment and rejection and abuse and where appreciation and responsibility is becoming more and more strange so that it seems normal. It doesn't, it's no longer a surprising fact when somebody can, you know, things that we see in the family, irresponsibility, abandonment. Somebody can just pick up and walk because I don't feel good anymore. The good thing is, he said, even if our earthly mothers will forsake us, he said, I will not forsake you. For your walls are engraven or engraved upon the palm of my hands. Isn't that amazing? Praise God. I'm saying that to say the word of God is the only worthy thing to invest our lives in. It's the only, it is through the word of God that we understand the world we live in. It is in fact through the word of God that we understand who we are. It is the word of God that gives meaning and essence to everything there is. And it is that word that says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse uh, 12, it says, for the word of God is what? It's alive. And it is sharper than any two-edged sword dividing. Help me out. Piercing the marrow, dividing the soul and spirit a discerner of thoughts and the intents of the heart. The word of God is alive. The word of God is alive. The word of God is alive. The milk of the word nourishes. The word of God is alive. Amen? The word of God is alive. If you touch a live wire that is connected to electricity, what happens? you'll be electrocuted. Am I correct? Is, is that not what they say? Okay. If you touch, if you come in contact with the word of God, what do you come in contact with? The life of God. Amen? Come on, amen? Hallelujah. So we are going to pick up from there, and we are going to continue to see how God wants us to uh, keep planting. Amen? Today, we are going to look at the word of God as rain. The word of God as rain. The word of God as rain. We see it as the living word. We see the, the scripture says it is sharper than any two-edged sword. All right. We see it as a discerner of thoughts and the intent of the heart. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 29, I believe. It says, is your word not like unto what? A fire? Is the word of God not like fire that consumes chaff and like unto a hammer that shatters the rocks in pieces? He's still describing the characteristics of God's word. Amen. Hallelujah. So he said, he said that. And in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, remember Jesus was telling a story. He said, two men went to build a house and one happened to uh, build on a dog, dog and kept digging until he got to a solid rock foundation and built his life on it. And the other person kept digging, kept, big, uh, kept digging, and I think he stopped halfway. All right, he's a drive-through kind of mindset where we need it quick. So he just built it on the sand. Now, both homes were exposed to exact the same climatic conditions. The outcome of each of them was different. Why? Because, and Jesus concluded that parable. He said, and so it is with everyone who pays attention to my word and applies it. He shall be likened 
to a man who builds his house upon a rock. He said the rain will come, the storm will come, the wind will blow and beat upon the house. He said, but the house will not fail. Why? Because the foundation of this house is the rock. Amen. Come on, amen. So that's another so, uh, instruction Jesus gave us there so that we can, when we are, as we are building our lives, we build through the word of God. Amen. Come on, amen. Now, Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11, he said, as the rain comes down from heaven and snow and does not go back, uh, yeah, I'm not an English language expert, but the first word in my King James Version did not say like rain. If it had said like rain, that means it's not really rain, but it acts like rain. But when it says as rain, that means it is exactly what it is. Amen. All right. The as and is, as versus is. All right. I hope I still remember my elementary school English language. All right. And somebody can fix it if I'm wrong. I believe, I believe I'm close to right. All right. Mr. Wright, will you help me? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. As the rain comes from heaven and it does not go back up, but it waters the earth. Are you looking at that verse? He said, causing it to bring forth and bud. It causes it to bring forth and bud. So it's my word that goes out of my mouth. To He says, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I sent it and shall prosper in the thing that I intended it for. That is my conclusion there. Am I correct? Is that right? So is my word. As the rain comes, so my word is. As rain falls, unless when the rain falls, where does it fall on? It falls, the, the aim of rain is not the roof. It is the soil. Hmm. The aim of the rain that falls is the soil. Because the seeds have been planted in the soil, either deliberately or by the wind. But pollination has occurred. The fruits have been born. They have ripened. They, they have busted the dispersion. Sometimes naturally, some fruits can send the seeds so far away, they just pop and they shoot out the seeds. Some, some, some seeds are born by the wind. Some seeds are born by wild animals that eat them and they, you know, pass them out. After they have digested in their stomach, they pass them out. Birds also carry seeds around. Insects carry seeds. All kinds of things help with the planting of seeds. Amen? But it doesn't matter how many seeds are on the ground unless rain comes from heaven to the earth to activate, to condition the soil, the temperature will not be right for the seed of the word or the seed that is planted to germinate. Amen. Come on, amen. 